Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, Eric Coffin, HRA Advisories. I'm here at the September 2018 edition of the Mental Investors Forum. I'm here with Robert Carrington, the, uh, the, the CEO of New Range Gold, and uh, I just wanted to get some background for my, for my own due diligence on the project. Now, uh, your project, Pamlico, is in, it's in the Walker Lane in Nevada, right? Correct. And you, you mentioned to me that it has a lot of similarities, and uh, I guess there's some, there some direct tie-in in terms of the, the location and the regional geology to Round Mountain, which is probably a, probably a deposit a lot of people have heard of, at least. Uh, yeah, certainly Round Mountain is one of the ten largest gold mines in the world. Yeah. And it's a, a very large open pit heap leach uh, operation for the most part. But Round Mountain and Pamlico the, share many, many characteristics in common, uh, not the least of which is they both are uh, large, low-grade disseminated or stockwork systems with very high-grade feeder structures. Both of them are widely known for producing extremely uh, uh, coarse gold within those, those very high-grade feeder zones. But the majority of the gold endowment in both systems is very fine-grained, almost micron gold typically hosted in, in fractures that are now coated with iron oxides. Originally, a lot of those fractures were probably uh, sulfide rich. Right. But both of those deposits have extremely deep levels of oxidation at Round Mountain. It's over 400 meters deep. At Pamico, it's uh, typically over 300 meters deep. Yeah, so which you, is, like you've rarely actually drilled and hit sulfides um, so far. Yeah, we've only hit sulfides in, I think, two of our drill holes, and those were deep stratigraphic test holes. And I think so far, like you're drilling, there's a couple of interesting aspects that we'll, we'll, we'll touch on here. But I mean, I think all, like all in all, you're the drilling since since you took over the project and started working it, you got a pretty high hit ratio with the with the drilling you you've done today. Extremely high. We out of 47 holes, we have 42 major intercepts. Um, okay. which what, what would major like? How would you define that? Um, just rough typically, terms? For, 42 intercepts. It would be. Um, it, well, it's, it's yeah. kind of a, a grade uh, tonnage uh, relationship, but it would be 42 intercepts that would generally be considered potentially ore grade mineralization, typically a gram or higher, and many of those are multiple grams, and quite a few of them are multiple tens of grams, as high as 340 grams a ton. Okay. Um, probably the most, one of the more significant intercepts is six meters of 94 gram gold. Nice. Um, and uh, you know we ha we have many intercepts like that. The the website has two pages of really substantial intercepts, um, and that that is the nice thing. We see these extremely high grade, uh, structurally controlled uh, gold zones, typically surrounded by a cloud of of lower grade mineralization. And at Pamlico, we have the, the luxury of considering one to three gram gold as being low grade. Right. <laughs> uh, now I th I think one of the things that you've got on deck that you want to do next is. There's a lot of underground workings there that you, you want to map and sample. This, this, was it not a private vendor that had this? It, I remember you telling me the story once. It was really kind of a strange yeah, story. Yeah, it, it's kind of unique in uh, Nevada mining history because Pamlico is one of Nevada's early, very high-grade mining districts. And um, there are records that, that indicate mines at Pamlico were shipping ore or assaying 200 ounces or more than 200 ounces a ton to mills on the Comstock load in 1886 to 88. But by 1898, a private mining family had consolidated the entire district. It originally started as artisanal miners. Right. And uh, this uh, private family uh, co um, uh, consolidated the entire district, then built their own mill, a 20 stamp mill that according to the information I've been able to dig up operated until 1928 and it just progressed in private family ownership until we acquired it in, in 2016. Hmm. The, the net result of that is it had missed most of the modern exploration that the majority of Nevada has seen. And so, you know, very importantly, when we acquired the district, it, uh, to a large extent, it was a snapshot back to 18, uh, 1898. Almost. So there, there was like and almost no drilling or anything? Almost no drilling. Uh, what little work had been done, a lot of it was done with a wagon track drill by the family we bought it from. Right. And their version of grade control was generally a gold pan. Right. Well, one of the interesting things about uh, Pamlico is we have 
obviously a lot of high grade samples and I've personally taken samples assaying between 180 and 340 grams and tried to pan gold out of them and there's no visible gold in those samples. We've been over the same samples with microscopes. It's for all intents and purposes micron gold right. in a volcanic host. The, the good thing about that is there's no chance for uh, preg robbing carbon or some of the, the problems that the Carlin style deposits uh, can have and Pamlico is a silica deficient system, okay. which means there's no potential for silica encapsulation. I, I anticipate the metallurgy at Pamlico will be extremely uh, simple and straightforward. And that, that's something that's starting right about now, right here? Yeah, we actually are just in the process of selecting the samples for the initial cyanide shake assays. And, and you told me like these wor the workings that you're just about to go in, and which I guess are hopefully for your sake and good repair, yeah. um, you're just supposed to go in and map and sample. You, it's kind of in the middle of the area of the you know the the mineralized um, trend, but you stayed out of it with the drill because there's just so many workings, and you you basically need to map them to know where they are. So you you've kind of got what might be the hot spot. You're just kind of getting to now essentially. Uh, well, it really is because we've been avoiding drilling in that area for a number of reasons. One is when you drill into an old or through an old mine working, um, if a big rock falls down the drill hole behind the drill bit, you can lose a lot you of drill steel. steel. Yeah. And every 10 foot, 10 foot stick of drill steel costs over a thousand dollars. So right. you, you lose many of those, it impacts your budget. Right. The other thing is, is as you drill through a work and you typically lose 30 to 40 feet of sample. Well, that the old mine workings are typically going to be along some of the better mineralized structures. So right. in a perfect world, you drill close to, but not necessarily into right. uh, those workings. Uh, as uh, underground mine workings, when they're properly mapped and sampled, constitute a walk through drill hole. Right. If, there, if there's five miles of workings there, that's more than $6 million worth of dr uh, drilling equivalent data that we can generate for a $150,000, $200,000 worth <laughs> of work. And it's valid data, it can be used in a resource estimate. Right. And so, you know, it, it's money extremely well spent uh, in that regard. And when we uh, do get to a, uh, the stage of a resource estimate, we have to have those maps so we can adjust the, uh, the volumes for the, for the uh, amount of rock the old timers mined out. And then this too is something that's going to get started relatively soon? Yeah, we're, we're looking to initiate a very aggressive drill campaign as soon as we get the, uh, the underground workings mapped and sampled. But I mean, because the one, just even the underground, how long do you think it would take to, to sample and map those workings? Um, I hope to have it done by the end of this year. Okay. Um, that's really kind of a function of how many underground surveyors I can put on the job. And right now, hiring qualified underground surveyors Not is either. challenging. Yeah, but essentially it's a, I mean, it's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, it's a relatively low cost program, but, you know, effectively it's a five or 10,000 meter drill program sort of in the center of what's, pro you know, assuming that family knew what they were doing, it's presumably in, you know, in the thick of things that you haven't been able to drill up to now. So there's potential for a lot of pretty interesting stuff to come out of these. Um, there, there definitely is. There are still veins in there where you can walk down the drift and with the hand lens, see visible gold in the vein that they left behind. So I, I think I seem to recall you did, like it was very limited. I think there was a couple areas where you, you did do some sampling from, from the work. We did. We did. When we first picked the property up, we went in and socket channel sampled the Merritt decline, which the Merritt family is the family we acquired okay. the project from. And we wound up with 75 meters of 3.2 gram gold in the last. Mm -hmm. 75 meters of the uh, that 200 meter long decline, and that included uh, one particularly large structure that ran 181 grams a ton. So, I mean, essentially, I, I mean, this to me, this sounds like a pretty important point, actually, and, and it's the point you know we can close out on this, but it's essentially uh, you know you just reeled off some pretty impressive results from you know sampling this one decline. So you're you're going to start what is effectively a five or six thousand meter drill program for all intents and purposes yeah. with, with this detailed sampling and mapping of this underground. So, you know, there should be a string of results coming from this sampling over the next two or three or four months. Oh yeah, there will be a, a string of very important results because as we go through we'll be mapping uh, levels and so we'll, we'll, we'll be developing a three-dimensional model 
of this. And as those results come out, we'll be able to uh, continue building that model, and that model will help vector the, uh, the uh, solution flow in the system. Right, and, and that'll kind of set you up for sort of drilling after that to kind precisely. of fill in this middle part that you, you kind of stayed away from because of the workings. Yeah, yeah, we've been really, really diligent about staying out of the area of those mine workings because, as I said, you lose 30, 40 uh, feet on either side of mine working uh, as you break into them, yeah. and that's your best best mineralization. So, yeah. you know, you want to you want to know what you're doing when you uh, when you start getting into areas of mine workings and. You know, we've had tremendous success getting close to them, mm -hmm. and so we're, we're, we're really anxious to, to get into that main Pamlico Ridge zone. And, you know, Pamlico Ridge is a four kilometer long target zone. We've explored 500 meters of it so far. Okay. So there's a lot more uh, of this kind of stuff coming. It's a very interesting story. I mean, it sounds like you're going to be generating lots of great results. I mean, the market's the market. I mean, the stock at the stock got beaten up pretty badly, which is no no fun for you, but for for someone who's watching this video, uh, to me it looks like a pretty a pretty good opportunity. If this, the price is trading it right now, I I think New Range is something where uh, you really want to take a look at it and 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 start following this as as Robert starts generating this new set set of results and works towards the resource next year. Thanks very much. Thank you, Eric. Okay.